Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about the Scythe Mugen 5 Rev B CPU cooler, a fantastic cooler that competes with other high-end CPU coolers, even though it's not the most recognizable name. Scythe means business, and by business, I mean well-cooled CPUs. Let's get started. Before we do though, I would really appreciate it if you check out my channel. I post PC tech videos, among other things. Also, if you have any comments or questions as the video goes along, be sure to drop a comment. If you like the video, drop a like, and if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub it really helps out the channel. To show how well this cooler performs, I'm going to use it on my recently built $700 PC, which I know a lot of you built yourselves. So if you decide you want to upgrade away from the stock CPU cooler, this video should definitely help you out. The CPU we're using in this video is the Ryzen 3600 with no overclocking. So let's take a look at the product description first so we know what to expect. It comes with a 120 millimeter 11 blade case flex fan that gives high airflow and static pressure while operating silently at 300 to 1200 RPM. It also has rubber bumpers, so Scythe definitely wanted to make sure that you get zero unnecessary noise. Also, because of Scythe's design choice to make it asymmetrical, it won't ever get in the way of the RAM, even if the RAM has a tall heatsink, since the bulk of the cooler is on the opposite side of the RAM. I honestly am not sure why all companies don't do this, so props to Scythe for that ingenuity and originality. So let's kick off the installation tutorial. Let me show you guys how to install this thing. It's very simple. I know the included parts make it look a little tricky, but just follow my guide here and I promise you'll have this all done in less than 10 minutes. All right, so let's get started with the unboxing. So let's open this box right up. We're greeted by another box which contains all of the important parts that we'll need to properly install the CPU cooler. So it comes with a screwdriver, which is by the way, a really nice screwdriver. Like I use this for the $1,000 build for pretty much every screw I use. And then a bag with of course the thermal paste, all the screws and brackets. And the final thing in the box is of course the instructions. Also in the main box, you'll find the 120 millimeter K's flex fan from Scythe. And then of course, heat sink. Very high quality. You can definitely tell from just looking at it. And as you can see, it also has an asymmetrical design to allow for more clearance for the RAM. Now let's install the CPU cooler. So in this video, I'm gonna show how to install it on a PC that is already built. So we're not gonna be removing a motherboard. Instead, we're gonna remove a stock cooler from AMD and replace it with the Scythe Mugen cooler. So to do that, of course, you're going to want to unscrew the stock cooler from your motherboard. And then after that, remove the CPU fan plug. Be sure to set it aside on a flat surface since there will be thermal grease left over. All right, so now let's remove the thermal grease from the CPU. The three things you'll need are coffee filters, Q-tips, and isopropyl alcohol. Start out by using the coffee filter. Just give it a really good scrub. There really isn't any rhyme or reason as long as you're picking up all that thermal grease or at least as much as you possibly can. And once you've done that, grab your isopropyl alcohol if you have any, put a little bit on the coffee filter and start doing the same process. Try to get as much of that thermal grease as you can off of the processor until you can see the Ryzen logo pretty clearly. Then use the Q-tip to get any thermal grease that may have leaked onto the sides or just any excess that would be hard to get to using the coffee filter. So again, you should be able to see the AMD Ryzen logo pretty clearly along with the text on the processor. And now it's time to get ready to install the new CPU cooler. If you're using a Ryzen processor, these are the only materials you'll need to use from the box. Remove the standoffs and the screws from their bag as they'll be the first things we'll be using to install the cooler. Then get the back plate that was included with your motherboard and put it in its proper position. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So what I recommend you guys to do is to get one standoff, place it on one of the backplate screws, and then get the bracket with the screw inside of it and screw it right on in. This is a little tricky. You gotta make sure the backplate won't fall out while you're doing this. So either somehow apply pressure to the backplate while you're screwing it in or get a second person to come help you to just push down on the backplate so it won't pop on out when you're screwing in the bracket. But once you get one screw in, it'll be pretty much secured. You won't have to worry about it popping out which is a really annoying thing. And then you just repeat the process. 
And once you have the bracket securely screwed in, it's time to flip the case back onto its backside so we can put on the final part for the CPU cooler. But first, we of course have to put on some thermal grease. So some thermal grease comes with the Scythe cooler. You can use any thermal grease you'd like, but I do recommend using the stuff that Scythe provides. It's actually really high quality thermal grease. You only want to put on a pea-sized amount. I put a little bit too much here, but regardless, that won't really affect thermal performance. It's just a basic rule of thumb so the thermal grease won't overflow over the sides. Anyway, be sure to take the sticker off of the bottom of the CPU cooler and then very carefully and slowly place it into its proper position. You'll know you're putting it in the right way if the bulk of the heatsink is facing the side of the IO, so the left side. The reason you want to be really slow and careful with this is because you don't want to push around the thermal grease, you want it to be evenly spread across the CPU. And once it's in its proper position, you can start screwing it in. Now don't fully screw in one screw at a time. What you wanna do is alternate between the two. So screw in the left one a little bit, then the right, and keep alternating until it's fully screwed in place. And now last but not least, the fan. Start out by plugging in the CPU fan cable. In this specific board, which is the B450 Tomahawk Max, the header is in the top section of the motherboard. And then you can align the fan with the CPU heatsink. There's two little notches that it slides into, so you'll know if you put it in correctly. And the last step is to secure the fan in place. So you're going to want to go ahead and grab the two metal uh, thingies. I have no idea what to call them, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. And then put it into the two little holes on the 120 millimeter fan and then take the notch on the side hole on it until it slides into the inlet on the heatsink. Repeat the process on the other side and this is what it should look like if you've done it correctly. And for aesthetic reasons, take this CPU cable and tuck it under the fan. This will also prevent the cable from touching the fan blades, which is a big no-no. And now for the numbers. So for this section, I won't be doing any commentary. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. So yeah, that will do it for this video. Link for this cooler will be in the description. If you like the video, drop a like, have any comments or questions, drop a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub. Also be sure to join the Rootech official discord link will be in the description. Thanks for watching. Peace out.